Oh, smoked it. Oh my gosh. And of course it's getting dark. Oh, they're still there. <laughs> What's happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode out on the yak, as you can see tonight, with old Steven over there. Hopefully we can find a few evening fish. We've got a couple hours before the sun goes down. So let's stop wasting time yapping and go fishing. I find it really hard to believe there's not a fish on some of these rocks. So I've still got the drop shot tied on, I know. People are gonna say, Debo got a yak. Debo got BFS stuff. Debo's throwing a drop shot. What in the heck happened to Debo's fishing? I know, weird times. But anyway, this is the four and a half inch fat robo worm. Uh, the Tack Warehouse Green Pumpkin Black and Blue, which is one of my, if not my favorite all time color in all kinds of plastics and they got it in this. So I'm like, I'm gonna try it. Still got this thing tied on. Maybe the old drop shot can redeem itself. There's one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't think it felt like a very big hit. I felt something running. Okay, well, there you go. Debo's Dinkathon begins. Don't forget to tip your waitress after a night like this. He's barely bigger than my drop shot, my guy. There's one. Surprise me. All right, copperhead. A little chatter and bug action. There's some water or something running in over here. He's a chunky little dude. Pound and a quarter. All right, thank you, sir. Some sort of water or something running in over here. I don't know if it's like a drain pipe. I don't see it, you can hear it though. Anytime you have drain pipes and running water, that's usually a good sign for fish to be around it somewhere. Oh, is that a carp? Looked like a carp out in front of me. Huh? I'm gonna keep just going down this way, I guess. How many times did we come over that? Multiple times with the Hellraiser. I threw around that with a Texas rig. I'm like, dude, there's gotta be a fish up in here somewhere. Wood, fine wood, fine beaver dam. Another chunky pound and a quarter dude. Thank you, sir. I'm still on top of stuff all the way out here. Okay, well, it looks like the copperhead from first gen it's got the little bb's there that it clicks on it's supposed to make a different sound more of a shallow runner though which is perfect here because i'm sitting in like anywhere from four to eight feet of water out here six feet right here just kind of casting up shallow in this little flat and there's grass and wood and stuff kind of mixed around with it so it's working for here well Oh, I wasn't recording. I just got snagged. My depth perception is crap. You actually probably heard me say that right before this. But anyway, I stopped recording, threw another cast up in there, had a fish bite it. He missed it, just threw up in there again, and he ate it. Well, kinda ate it. I kinda manner hooked him like I was gonna use him as bait. Sorry, friend. Swiped at it. There we go. Another little dude on the night. It's been a little bit of everything. Nothing, uh, nothing definitive. No sort of bite that's just been crazy. Oh gosh, another one. Yes. There's like a little divot over here of, oh boy, there's all kinds of stuff up here blowing up. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, he's a little better than I thought. I thought he was a tiny dude. All right, there we go. One on the popper. Dude, you were fine until you lodged that all up in there. All right, there we go. A little pound and a half for over there. Eating little fish over here, whatever this. There's some runoff and like a little divot over here in the water and they are up shallow pushing them. Go and come back for it. Got him. Another one. Same multiple dang fish missed it over there. There's got to be more out here eating. Another chunky little dude. Chunky little pond halfer. My goodness. Quite angry about it as well. There we go. Another chunked out pond a quarter, pond a half, or something like that. I mean, they've just got all kinds of fish corralled over here up dirt shallow you can see them running them chasing them I'm trying to get in there as close as i can with the popper that's a few oh my gosh that dude missed it they're out just a little bit farther how did you miss it feller here by my bait what of course just as I was getting bites I can barely see where the heck I'm casting I don't have my glasses and of course it's getting dark oh they're still there oh my gosh still there huh feller look yeah see I hooked you and wacky rigged you all right here we go a pound and a quarter, dude. I can't believe I just went right up there. And that fish was still there. Next cast, right after getting snagged, and he was still right there. Benefits of having a kayak. You can kind of creep around and get those snags out. Now, see, this is a spot where if I were bank fishing, I couldn't even get to this over here. There's another one. Ooh, feels a little better. Feels a little better. I have him hooked weird. Oh, my battery's about to die. Don't die, battery. Oh, my goodness. Is this the best one of the night? Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. As my battery's about to die. Oh, don't you come off. Oh. Okay. Got to change battery. Of course, somebody pulls up. Probably going to be DNR since I don't have my lights on. I get on a bite as the sun's going down here. Perfect. Great. Love it. Okay, wasn't a super big one. We'll take it, biggest one of the night though. Pound and a half, long skinny fish, long skinny fish. Look at that, right, friend. Thanks for eating, we appreciate you. Battery's about to die. All right, I know y'all can probably not see any of this, but since we have fish over here still biting, I'm gonna make a couple more casts. I'm gonna have to get off. Luckily that was not the, the dinner come to arrest me. Just some dude checking to see if we were out catching fish, I guess. Watched me for a little bit and then jollied on out of here. There's another one. Walk in the popper. Walk in the popper. Another. Ooh, another solid fish. Hey. bait fish trapped up in here munching on them there we go you even see him barely thanks to my screen there he is it's a fish bye fishing friends that was the end of the night i did stay for a little bit a little bit longer uh, i didn't even have my lights on me so i know shame on me uh when you're operating after dark you're supposed to have lights but steven and i were the only two there you know it's for safety in case anybody's there Nobody else was out, so I don't condone that. Uh, make sure you got your lights on. But I stayed for a while and I caught, I don't know, four more after that. I All those fish on that spot with that popper came in like a 35 minute window. 
all those. It was an insane feeding frenzy. And what I was trying to point out earlier is two things. Number one, a lot of people see carp jump, and I put that carp jump in there because people say, oh, I saw bass jump, and you know, there's a whole bunch of jump and stuff. Usually when bass are chasing bait, it doesn't look like that. It's not a big fish that comes out and flops. You'll see like little minnows dart and you'll see like kind of things hitting and then like splooshes. But it's usually not just like one big flop. So that was the first thing. That's why I threw that in there. And number two was when you're looking for a fish feeding on top water, look for those little tiny fish, whether it's out, you know, jumping, skittering across. It almost looks like somebody's skipping a bait across the water. That's what those little fish will look like. That's what I was seeing up underneath those trees. I heard that water, caught one there early, right when we first got there on the chatterbait. It's actually the copperhead uh, from first gen. Decided to move around, cover water, thinking, you know, maybe there's more here, I can find something, whatever the deal was, uh, and that didn't pan out until later in the night. And that was absolute awesome that I got on that because they were fired up, they were there. There's like a, a water runoff there and it cut, it creates like a, a divot where that water was running out. So it creates like a little makeshift like river uh, or creek channel. And I don't know if the fish were in that or if they were just kind of cruising and like the little fish were in there eating, you know, the little plankton and algae and stuff, you know, all that stuff that comes out of there from runoff. If they were eating that, either way, you could see little fish jumping underneath the overhangs, running from fish and they were just stacked there. I don't know how many were there, uh, but it was amazing. All on that Rebel P71 popper. My gear's out in my truck, so I'll have to throw screenshots up for you. Um, the Rebel P71 popper, it's a re-release. They had the P70 before. P70 is a little bit bigger. It does have a larger mouth. It's really good at blooping, like when you just, you know, slowly pop it, bloop, bloop. Um, but if you tie a loop knot uh, or you have like a bigger split ring on it, you can get it to walk side to side really well. That's what I was doing there, just walking that, kicking, you know, side to side. And they were just coming up and hammering that. Um, I was sitting in like five feet of water and I was casting up as shallow as I could without getting hung. Um, Debo with no glasses at night uh, and I get those like sparkly things, what, nystagmus or whatever. So like when I drive without glasses, it's just like starburst fireworks is all I see. And I didn't know for the longest time that that wasn't normal. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, my depth perception without glasses because I had sunglasses on, took them off, um, is awful. But anyway, trying to get as shallow up in there as I could and then just kind of walk on that out, skinnering it, uh, messing with my pace. And then sometimes I would just kind of stop and give it a couple bloops, bloop, bloop, and put those pauses in there because paws can be just as much of a bite maker as, you know, knocking off a piece of wood or, you know, getting caught in the grass and pulling it out, getting those fish to react. But there, I don't know that you would have had to have do much, just put it somewhere where there was fish and they were eating. So it was a blast, you know, a bunch of pound and a halfers. Um, I think I had one that was close to two pounds probably after I turned off the camera, but uh, I wasn't weighing them. It was just a ton of fun when you just have a showdown of every few casts, fish, fish, fish. And there were a bunch of misses too. I didn't even put half the misses in there when they were hitting it, you know, popping out of the water. So great time. Um, rod and reel, the rod was the Daiwa Aired X. Um, it's the medium power and it was a little soft for that bait. I honestly didn't like it. Um, I switched and have went to the Daiwa Tatula XT, which is, is that a $99 rod? I think a $99 rod now. Um, the medium, I'll put the specs and everything below, but that feels a ton better. Um, I've been throwing like a plopper on that, actually. The new uh, head and spinning image, if you watch my last unboxing, kind of their version uh, of a Whopper plopper, but throwing it on that. And I like that a lot better. Um, the reel is the Daiwa Tatula CT with 14 pound, Trilene XL and the Red Box. Still my favorite mono of all time. Um, that's the combo. So nothing super crazy. Just look for those little things. You know, I was listening, I hear the water in there, and I should have stuck to it earlier in the night because I probably would have caught a lot more there. We could have just camped that, you know, the whole night. Two, two and a half hours, you know, worth of fishing, and then 30 minutes of that was the, the bombardment at the end of just fish. So listen, uh, today's subscribe fish and friend, my guy, Mike Vogel. This is why I call you all fish and friends, not just subscribers. You're not a number. Uh, Mike was nice enough to, he went to Bass Pro Shops, saw this shirt and was like, Debo, I know a guy that really likes uh, Mr. Dance. He purchased it and sent it to me. I have the awesomest crew of fish and friends. I very rarely get negative hate and comments. Um, People taking care of me, uh, you know, thanking me for the time I put in, checking in on me on stuff, storms. Um, I am blessed to have you all as as my followers. So I appreciate the heck out of all you fish and friends, not just Mike, but everybody out there. I try to say it at the end of every video because, again, I would be nothing without all of you out there watching. So that's enough for me. Got to edit. Love you. Thanks for watching. Till next time.